I got the fancy one. Yeah, you're. I guess you're just more special than mm -hmm. I am. Negative eighty, negative eighty Celsius for you, Mr. Ruger. <laughs> yeah, and we are We're live streaming. We've heard. that's fine. All right, yeah. okay. We have been okay. Right, um, I have Martin. started the recording. Vaccine. Okay. Um, do you guys want to start with roll call? Yep. All right, Councilman Curl. Here. Council President Wolf. Here. Councilperson Shrimp. Here. Councilperson Benedetti. Here. Councilperson Brueger. Here. Councilperson McNamara. Present. Got it. All right. And sorry, I told you I wasn't ready. That's all right. Friday. There we go. All right. So we have meeting minutes for February 8th, 2021. Move to approve. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Extensions. All right. Meeting minutes for February 15th, 2021. Move to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Extensions. Okay. We're good. All right, go for it, Mark. All right, quite a few of them to get through here tonight, guys. We're going to start with uh, Resolution 2020-39, final confirmation of Officer P Piney. Um, this is our third reading, so I'm going to move for approval. Second. Seth is his first name. I couldn't remember that. Sorry. Oh, you're good. Okay. All right. It All has right. been moved and seconded. Anyone want to discuss any objections, any uh, questions? Um, for the record, we have received no um, no issues or uh, um, discouragement from doing so from our police staff. Is that um, the impression? No, they're actually the ones that um, put it back on the table or asked me to have you guys put it back on the table. So no, we're good. Excellent. Uh, it, it, it is, what's his name again? Seth. Um, Seth Penny. 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 Yes. Oh. Huh. Yeah. All right. Let's go to Councilperson McNamara. Well, on that, um, on the advice and consent. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, aye. Councilperson Brueger. Aye. I think I got an eye there. Yeah, aye. Sorry. Oh no, you're good. Councilperson Curl. Aye. Councilperson Benedetti. Aye. Councilperson Shrimp. Aye. Council President Wolf. Aye. Got it. All right. And... All right. Next is 2020-01. This is third reading of pool fees. Um, we've went over this the past few times that we've talked about it, gone over what changes were made. Um, and this is the third reading, so I'm going to move for passage so we can start getting that uh, advertised and getting memberships. Second. We still have to wait 30 days, though. Yep. Yep. All right. Council President Wolf. Aye. Councilperson Shrimp. Aye. Councilperson Benedetti. Aye. Councilperson McNamara. Aye. Councilperson Brueger. Uh, yes. And Councilperson Curl. Aye. Got it. All right. All right. Now for the exciting one, everyone. Resolution oh, yeah. 202102 sale of the EMS vehicle. Um, uh, are we still getting the 60000 for that, Mayor? All right, we are selling our old vehicle for $60,000. Uh, this is a, tech, a second reading, but I am going to move that we waive readings and pass it tonight, and I will be asking you to pass it as an emergency. This is necessary because of getting paperwork to the right people at the right time and actually completing the sale. 
So I move to waive the uh, third reading. Second. All right. That one to Tony. Yeah. That's fine. Okay. And then let's start with Councilperson Berger. Uh, yes. Councilperson Benedetti. Aye. Councilperson Trim. Aye. Council President Wolf. Aye. Councilperson Curl. Aye. Councilperson McNamara. Aye. Got it. All right, having waived the third reading, I now move to pass it as an emergency. Second. It has been seconded. Anyone want to comment or disagree or give their opinion? All right, let's move right to that roll call then. Councilperson Shrimp. Aye. Councilperson Berger. Aye. Council President Wolf. Aye. Councilperson Wolf. Or Curl. Aye. Councilperson McNamara. Aye. Councilperson Benendetti. Aye. Got it. All right. So goodbye, uh, EMS vehicle. Yeah. Uh, a reasonable I've use of emergency to help to help the village get the money. Yeah. Hello, high backed leather chairs for the council room. <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> right, i'm going to bring mine once we get back <laughs> once we're back i don't need this here i won't be teaching anymore I show up every night with my own chair okay on to more legislation we're at 2021-03 appointment of kimber second reading uh this is our new police dog who was introduced to the public i believe last friday out in front of the building um, that has been read a second time. Ordinance 03 2021 salary and positions. This is just codifying the different salaries and positions of people in the village. Uh, third reading, so I'm going to move to pass. Second. Any discussion? All right, I think we're ready for that vote. All right, Councilperson Curl. Aye. Councilperson Shrimp? Aye. Councilperson Benedetti? Aye. Councilperson Wolf? Aye. Or Council President Wolf? There we go. Still an aye. <laughs> Councilperson Brueger? Aye. And Councilperson McNamara? Aye. All right. And down lastly, to, oh, wait, no, not lastly at all. I skipped 2021-04, I believe. Second reading, that is the Mad Scientist grant, uh, which is going to be used by us to create a lily pond along the walking path. And I believe I did not read that one. So I'm sorry to not have done those in order. Uh, second reading of that. And lastly, a second reading for Ordinance 04-2021, Supplemental Appropriations. Um, that was sent out earlier this evening. The revised change is if anyone wants to look at it. And Tiffany, if you want to talk about it, feel free. Okay, that's the one that um, they actually have a carryover balance from 2020. Um, so the reason that that one is a tiny bit different than last week's for the first reading is because we actually added that amount in there. Um, what that is, what both of those are for is we were, we were given a grant um, for the lily pond, which we were just talking about. So that is the village lily pond 2596. Um, and then the other is for the community garden. They were awarded the other grant and we hold that money. Um, it's something that we help them do. So that is their money in that one particular fund. And that's what that is. There we go. And it has now been read twice. Anyone want to have any questions or concerns with that? I know there were some. Uh, yeah, I, I haven't seen it. Is this like a standalone lily pond next to other ones with no lilies? Or <laughs> it's um, planning and zoning had been working on a couple different ideas for the green space, and this is one of the ones that we um, thought would be a great one to turn into a lily pond. So, um, Lisa had put in 
for a grant and was awarded the grant. So we're that's one of the ones that we're moving forward right now with. So we're hoping that we can get that one this spring. Yeah, it's, so that it's an existing pond. existing pond. It's existing it's, pond behind yeah. Green Line Way. It's the it's the retaining pond just down the path from where the dam is. Um, I guess it'd be east of the dam. So it's that first one. And it's to, you know, put in plant life that's going to hopefully help, help keep it safe and healthy native lily, water lilies, and replace the normal grass around the outside, I believe, with natural well, that, growing that was stuff. Supposed to be, that was supposed to be talked about in planning and zoning. There were couple of options there. One one included the grass or the planting of the um, native uh, wildflowers, etc. and one did not. I, uh, Tiffany, do you have the status on that? Yes, you guys should have the updated legislation from the mad scientist one. We upped um, for planning and zoning. They had asked me to ask for up to $4,000 to being able to do a couple different things. Um, as of right now, the only thing that we know that we're going to do is we are, in fact, going to kill off the grass. It's some, um, um, Tony, I don't know if you can chime in because you know that that's not my area of expertise. But yes, we are adding in for them to kill off because if not, um, my understanding is it would take all summer. We wouldn't actually be able to do the project until fall or even next year once we killed everything off. So this was our only option. Um, some sort of spray of some sort is going to kill it off. Yeah, I thought I'd seen but that doing it. things yes. that got sent out. Yes, but we are having mad scientists do it. Um, but again, planning and zoning had asked for um, up to $4,000 to being able to get a couple of those things done in the area. Honestly, I don't believe we're going to spend that much with mad scientists, just telling you that. Um, we really don't think it's going to be much more than about thirty to 3300 um, But in the event that we do decide to do something additional, we don't have to come back to you guys. So that's why we set it right at 4,000. And 2,500 of that is from the grant. Yes, 2,596 total... is from the grant total, yeah. yes. But I messed up the one legislation a long time ago. If you remember right, I only did the 2,500, but it was actually more than that. So I'm doing the full amount, even though 20, we're not spending all of that, no. And there's also money in there for another area close by the- Correct, directly across from there from the pond so it's not just the lily pond yeah i'm trying to think if me and the wife have any extra seed stock for water loving pollinator plants i'll get i'll get back to the group <laughs> if we can you need any extra we need some goldfish <laughs> no goldfish are horrible for no, the no, environment no. No. <laughs> i'm They're kidding horrible for the environment All right, uh, that is me finished with legislation then. Awesome. All right, does anybody have, sorry, wrong phone, um, new business? Okay, anybody have any old business? Yep, uh, just real quick, I sent out from the tabulation committee assignments. Uh, this is kind of your opportunity to speak now or hold your peace. So everybody should have received those. A few days ago, uh, if, if you, if I'm not hearing any dissent at this point, we'll call those assigned. So to take that one step further, if people can start um, scheduling some meetings and trying to get comfortable in that position, that would be great. Um, we will get the website updated over the next couple of days um, to reflect some of those changes. But again, like, like he said, if there's any issues, problems, questions, concerns, reach out. ASAP before we change the website and go through all of that. So um, the, there was something I was going to say, now I don't remember. No, mm, I don't know. Um, so yeah, we'll get all that updated here in the next short bit. Um, we will also be sending out all of the, I know we have the meeting on March 1st. The reason we haven't sent that out just as an FYI is because we'll do all of Marches together. We plan on doing those Wednesday. Um, so I did not forget about that meeting. Um, what meeting I'll, first? Okay. That meeting for you guys to talk about some of uh, the, I think you guys were talking about a couple different things. Brian, was, correct me if I'm wrong. You guys no, are talking about- I thought about, it was just the job descriptions or whatever you're calling that. Yeah. 
project. We were, it was a work session to continue the conversation regarding uh, uh, yeah, the, the, the staffing, correct. Right there in the tiny calendar. And then um, I'm not, I don't remember who was talking about, you know, we're almost to March. So I think that there was some discussion of talking about furthering the basketball court conversation and some of those things. Um, again, that's what, what you guys decide to do is uh, that, yeah. Um, so I'm not sure who's furthering that conversation. Um, and then, you know, again, we're, we're, we're toting March and we've not really had any progress on the lakes whatsoever. Um, you know, like uh, maybe again, I know I've talked about doing this, just kind of moving forward, bringing you guys legislation and turning it down. I, I don't really know what to do to get you guys pushing forward on the lakes. So, you know, at this point, I don't know, I've, I've given you guys a couple different, um, dredging things. I've heard some people say they don't want to dredge, you know, are we going to look for grants? Are we going to get a grant writer? Are we just going to put it out to bid without having it engineered? You know, we've had a couple emails back and forth, but we've not really had anybody. Um, we really haven't had a big push of anybody saying, this is what we want to do. This is what we need to do. So um, I'm still looking for you guys to kind of let me know which way you guys really want to try to go. I mean, again, if we don't have it engineered, the quick conversation with that is without turning this into an hour long conversation tonight. Um, if we don't have it engineered and we just start getting bids again, we've already had one or two, we know it's going to be expensive. How are we going to pay for it? Are we going to write a check? Are we just going to get a loan? Like we have not had a sit down conversation in 2021 and we're already in March. Literally we will be in March next week. Well, I don't know. We, we had this conversation, Mary, and I'm not exactly sure what you're looking for right here other than we hold on <laughs> and that, uh, you know, it's March, it's frozen outside. And I'm not exactly sure what, uh, well, let me back up. I'm not of the, I'm of the opinion that we're not going to be spending a, a ton of money on this this year. You know, so the things that we've heard is that, uh, you know, the best thing to do is going to cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. And I don't think we're in a position to spend that kind of money. So at this point, my vision is to do something very similar to what we did last year. Only this time, we're going to have to be on top of it and get somebody out there to look at it when, uh, when the water's down. You know, and we'll have this in another conversation, but I know you're you know, worried that we're not doing anything, but I don't know that there's anything that we can do right now. Well, I think that's the conversation because if we're looking for grants, it's going to be, if you don't start applying for grants now, you're not going to have opportunities to apply for grants or it's not going to be done in 2022. Um, if we end up getting loans or doing anything like that, that's something that we can move forward on. There has been money budgeted for certain things like that. We have already brought out enough people to basically, again, there's, there are council members that do not think that dredging is, is even what, maybe I shouldn't speak for them. I believe that there are council members that don't even think dredging is, is really what we should be looking at. Um, we've brought enough people, here's where we are, bringing more people out there to give us an estimate. This has to go out to bid because it's gonna be over $50,000. So whatever we decide to do has to go out to bid. So my point is we're in March, you're correct, it's frozen. Um, but if we want to have it engineered, if we want to do all of these things that it now is the time to be doing that stuff, because we have to have three readings. We have to have, you know, there's a lot that goes through to that. If you end up putting it out to bid, it stays out to bid for almost a month. So if you actually want to make any progress is that no one's talking about doing grants, you know, so that's not going to end. It's not what we're going to do. That, that, I guess that's my question. So when somebody comes to me. I guess I'm looking for you guys that council just doesn't want to move forward on the lake this year, that we're going to do small projects. And so I think that's where we're all not really on the same page. Like, I don't know, I don't know that any of us are on the same page. And I think after a year we should be. Um, and again, what, I'm not what trying year to do we plan on doing it. That's my question. I guess it's just, uh, it's just, there is, there doesn't seem to be a, a, a feel good satisfactory among the uh, consensus on the, on the best win. It just hasn't, it hasn't come along. I think it's, it's like the, um, it, uh, like the lake, the lake court, the shore court, the, that, that whole 
process of getting the storm water in. I think, uh, I don't know that Tony agrees, but I think most of us would agree it's at the point now, it's got the, the engineering is being, I mean, there's some other engineering piece being done, I think, but it's at the point where I'm comfortable that it's, it's, it needs to be, it needs to be done even though it's too expensive and all that. I'm, I'm comfortable that we've done a lot of the research and all that. Me, I'm comfortable with that. But uh, I, I just cannot, uh, and some of the other sewer projects I'm, to I'm totally comfortable with. I'm just not, I just, the lake thing is, is just uh, something that I don't, you know, that may be something that has to be done kicking and screaming, but I don't think there's anybody that's gonna go, oh goody, let's spend, Six hundred thousand dollars and get both lakes done, or eight hundred thousand dollars get both lakes done. Yeah, yeah, let's go, let's do it. I don't think you're going to. I don't know, but I don't think you're going to get that response from anybody. We've had, well, that, nobody, well, we've had that response for thirty years. Yeah, nobody's going <laughs> to yeah. want to spend that much money. But. Yeah, so maybe we can cut through this instead of saying we think there are people who are opposed to dredging. Is you know. We're not talking about the dollars of it. Is there anybody in this in this audience that actually thinks that there's a solution other than dredging? Right. We can we can continue to put band aids on and and all that, but but the curative measure, as I understand it, is dredging. Is there anybody that believes otherwise? Okay, I am taking that silence as agreement. So we know that the curative measure is dredging. So that means that we need, the next step is to figure out how to pay for it, right? So we can, uh, you know, if, if the question is, so A, that should then be a priority for our finance committee, right? Who is now chaired by me. So I guess I'll be <laughs> scheduling a finance committee meeting. <laughs> um, Sorry, Brian. Yeah, look at that. Open my big trap. Um, right. And, you know, I guess the finance committee will, will figure that out. I, I'd assume we will have a preference for writing grants, but I'd also presume that we have a preference for getting it done sooner rather than later. Um, I will, the other finance committee people are Mark and Diane. Um, uh, I know we usually like to have... Um, we have, we have to have, have to have Kim there. So, yeah. So, um, if Tiffany, if you could have Kim email us with some availability and we will fill in the slot and try to get to it even this week, if we can. And I will say as far as I'm concerned, so I had two things I've, I've said, it's going to be a lot, but we need to do it. I, and I've, I've to put that out in the email before, but I'm kind of going to add a caveat to it. Um, I'm not, I'm not sure that, you know, even the final approval to get put a shovel or a little dredgy boat thingy out there is going to happen this year. Um, because I really kind of, I don't like the idea of having two or more big projects on the books at the same time. I kind of want to see the community building we already have going. We have the engineering firm coming up with things. Hopefully before the end of the year, we're going to be spending some money and putting up some whatever, whatever. And I'd kind of want to see A, how that goes as far as cost, B, what our income and five-year forecast looks like, just to kind of be able to plan more of, okay, we have the building, we know it's going to cost. We now have another full year with full occupancy, for lack of a better term, in the new section. Now can we come up with a more accurate five-year forecast of, oh, it looks like we really are going to have enough money that we can spend $800,000, put it on a six-year loan, and pay it off, or maybe oh, things are worse than we thought, there's no way we can do it. Well, I think, I mean, if, 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 I, if I may interject, I think that is the level of in the weeds that we 
should leave for the finance committee meeting. Yes. Okay. Well, right. I, just well <clears throat> I have a suggestion that I made numerous times before, and that is in the meantime, while we're deliberating, uh, especially on North Lake, the shoreline is pretty foul. And, you know, we had some volunteer efforts that actually did, did some good. I don't know if we could do it all with volunteer work, but if the shoreline was a little cleared up, the, the, the appearance of the lakes would change dramatically with or without dredging. And I think that would be a move forward. Yeah, I, I, I trees, definitely tend trees to have floating in there, and <laughs> you know, well, we had some good. Uh, I can't remember who it was that you brought in, Mayor Hughes, last year, who came, and it was like two thousand dollars a day, and they brought up some some light equipment and some chainsaws, and the, that's that's certainly something that I could just be like, oh yeah, do that if we if we need to, if the weather is nice, if the water is low. Oh. I yeah, what, we need to get a couple. What has babies, to happen you know? now, though, in that particular area he's talking about, Constable Curl's talking about, is is it needs to be a bucket brigade. It, 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 it needs to be just along the shoreline there, and while it's piled up on the uh, southwest side, it needs to be dug out a little bit so the water flow is better. And that's that's manual slug it out labor if you don't have. If you can't get the equipment in there to do it, it needs to be shoveled out and hauled someplace. Here we go again, shovel out and haul someplace. Well, it's, it's also a complete, a complete uh, briar patch along the west side of North Lake that's mostly poison ivy. And uh, <laughs> Well, I think you just run over that with the tractor. I mean, that's, that's just- Well, the tractor won't go in there. It needs to be hand taken out of there, Yeah. but- so, Okay. Well, I think the short anyway, we're, as you say, we're getting in the weeds on that one, but uh, I think <clears> in order to, but but the thing is, because you can't get, you're not going to be able, to, you, you don't want to have someone go after grants until you have in writing exactly what you're going to do and how much it's going to cost, and where you have your sample quote from somebody, then then you can hand it off to someone to go look for a grant. So, and then so so Brian's right. The first step is to confirm how you're going to, the first step is to, to pick out your bid that you want to base everything on and then figure out if you could, how you finance it and then give it to a grant writer. If you get past that point, then give it to uh, someone to go look for a grant for it and do write a grant. So next step, I guess, would be, that's assuming oh. that we, we pick the solution that we want to Get financing for. If we do go ahead with dredging, I don't think we need to clean anything out in there. That's going to come along with the bulldozers, okay. trees, and all that stuff. Well, so it's a I, I think, community building think, project. That's what I like about them. Right. Ah. But I, I do think that the, uh, you know, our. Unless somebody, I, I thought I heard maybe Diane saying differently, but I, my understanding is the next step is to talk about how we can pay for it in finance. Do we need the community committee to say this is the bid that we are working towards for finance first? Is that what I heard you saying there, Diane? Well, I, I remember Tiffany sent out an email with the, the option, outlining the options that we've talked about so far, right, Tiffany? Yeah, the three. Times. Okay. So, well, move. so I remember there was more than one. So we we need to pick well, the one we want. If we move to this finance. next, if we move to this next step with Brian, we're not committing to anything yet, are we? No, I there's no. To, yeah, so we are so far from any kind of commitment that. Right. So we could gather information. Well, All right. we already have gathered information. That's the point. We've already got numbers. And information. It's just that what is it? What is it you want? What is it that we should pick for finance then to go and figure out if we can finance? What is it? What's what is this the solution we picked? Okay, you guys got to remember that you still have to put all of it out to bid. So you've got to figure out exactly what you're trying to do. So right. again, you're you, you guys haven't even gotten to the engineering part to determine if you're you know to put it out to bid to figure out how much it's going to cost 
whether or not, you know, another year from now, if these bids are going to be anywhere remotely close to what it was. Because if you guys look at the, the estimates that we got from 2018 compared to now, they've gone up double. You got to remember, we were only about $500,000 for the large, for the North Lake, or I'm sorry, the South Lake. And now we're over that for the North Lake. So, I mean, again, it, this project's going to have to go out to bid. Those were estimates that we got a year ago. Um, I don't know what they're going to look like. You've not put it out to bid. We may get something drastically lower. Um, we may get something that's drastically higher by the time the time rolls around when we're able to do it. So, I mean, at this point, I think it's a matter of, um, I agree, figuring out how you're going to pay for it. It's going to be one thing because we do know it's going to be at least X. I mean, I think we can almost all agree on that. Um, but as far as, you know, whether or not you're going to, you know, you're probably fifty, sixty thousand dollars to do a master plan. If you're going to have this completely engineered, you're probably going to need all of that. If you're going to do a grant, you're going to need all of that. So again, there's a lot of things that you guys could be doing that we could be doing right now to plan for that. Um, again, if we have interest in grants and we have interest in all of that, you're going to have to go through all of the engineering and plan master plan. I don't want to call it a master plan, but you're going to need all that stuff. Well, so, yeah, and I think, but I think that 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 in terms of funding, we can we can come to a number that will probably cover us, so that we can right. decide how we're going to swallow that pill. And if there's something else that's going to have to be put aside for a while, if this is a priority, and, and that'll help make the decision about whether what it is, you know, right. Right. what it is we really want to do. Because if it turns out that if it's you know, for a while there, when it was five hundred thousand dollars, you know, Kim was like, "Yeah, well, we could we could do both. We could do a facility, right. and we can do this. And this is how we would do that with a bond and blah blah blah." So if it if it's uh, significantly gone up, or we have to look at a bigger number now, and of course, the facility is going to be a bigger number now. Then let's look at relook at the numbers and just say, you know, it, it may. Maybe that we can do both or we can do three or however many we're trying to do this year, but at some point we won't be able we'll have to we'll have to say no so as much as we want to do. So we, we have to look at all the projects, how much has been budgeted, how much is left over, what kind of bond, there's only so much we can put at risk. Right. And we'll, uh, I think if we said $800,000 uh, for the dredging, uh, that may be a little low, but I think we said 800,000 for the purposes of discussion that would, that would get the ball rolling and we could see what would that mean for our finances and is it really realistic? And it, and it could very well be, you know, what's nice is if the water's covering the lakes, except for, you know, the North Lake gets a little shallow there if it's, it's a drought. If we're lucky, we don't have a drought this year. You know, the lakes can look nice on the top and, and not that many people care. But, uh, you know, because, oh, because no, I, I just want to say this, no, I want to say this because right now with the economy, the way it is with so many, it's just with the labor being so difficult to get prices are about as high, they could even go higher right now. And so if there's something that, you know, we really may have to think about, we, you know, what the benefit would be of waiting for a year for the economy to come back a little bit, for the labor to loosen up a little bit. And, and, you know, that may be, if it's costing enough, if it costs enough money, it may be something we have to consider. It's just those, you just want to try to get as many facts on the table as you can to make the best decision you can. No, and, and again, I, I'm just thankful for the conversation. I'm going to tell you that, you know, I've had residents asking, you know, of course, what's going on? Where are we at? Um, don't really have much answers for a lot of the big things that people are asking for. So um, there are a lot of people that would like to know what's going on. Um, so I, I don't disagree. I don't disagree with anything you guys have said. The, I mean, it, it's an ongoing topic and I think it deserves its own meeting. I think we can all also agree with that. It's 737 and you know this is supposed to be a quick meeting, but I also am just trying to point out that um, here in about two to three weeks, once we start getting the snow off and all of that, we're going to start getting what's going on, what's going on, what's going on. That has been, I, I think you guys all know that, that has been, the lakes have been the number one complaint that I have. Number two, uh, with a close second with the basketball court. So having a plan going into what we're doing, um, 
just helps me. I, I, I know that that's not everybody's priority, making sure that I have answers, but you know, I can't do these things without you guys. So, um, I'm the one that takes the brunt of it. I think you guys also know that. So I just kind of want to be able to give people answers as to what we're looking at, what we're not looking at. If it's 2022, if it's 2023, you know, I, I just don't want to give people false hope if this is not something that we're interested in moving for um, in 2021. So that's that. I don't want to go any further into it. I, I feel like we've, I kind of got a couple answers. It's live streamed. People can kind of get an idea of what councils feels like. Um, and that's that. So well, that was basically the only other things that I have for you. I'm going to switch topics for two seconds. Um, Eric has an estimate coming for the walkway path. I think I already told you that I have somebody else that gave me an estimate. If I didn't tell you that, sorry. Um, but I did get somebody else that gave me a, a roundabout estimate, but he's going to be out Thursday or Friday because he believes it's all going to be melted by then. So I should have two, um, within the next seven to 10 days, I should have, by the next meeting, I should have two estimates for the asphalt. Obviously we can't do it yet, but we definitely could start readings on it. Um, most of the asphalt plants won't open until mid April, early May. Um, but hopefully that's a project you guys are going to get behind and we can get that done as soon as possible because that, where's yeah. that, where's that go? Um, that's the walkway that's in front of the parking lot or the, yeah, the parking lot in front of the lake where it's all buckled and there's holes in it and, um, uh, uh, next to the admin building. Yeah. Yeah, it connects from the old, yeah, the old path over to the building. Well, on the lakes, I agree with everything Diane said, except for one thing. The idea that not too many people care flies in the face of everything I've heard from uh, people, whether they live near the lakes or not. Of course, people live near them are much more motivated to see something happen. Of course, of course, you live by the lakes, you're going to hear from people by the lakes, but I, I and I... I, don't get me wrong, I, I, I love, uh, I, it, it's sad to, to see, you know, the neglect, but, but it, I, it's, it is what it is right now. So, but there are a lot of people who don't live around the lakes and the only time they see the lakes is when they drive by in their car. And that's also true. So what the actual percentage of people who, who care and look at them on a daily basis is, I, I, I'm not really sure, but I, I'm, you know, again, it just depends on, on the, the resident. I don't think we hear from all our, uh, I don't believe we are hearing from near, nearly ha even half of our residents about their, uh, their feelings on this. I just don't think we do. So what, it'll what be hard to What are they but saying in the real estate? Your backyard is in the, is facing the lake. You, you see it every day. It's, it's in your face every day and it's on your mind my, every day. My neighbors are the ones that, <laughs> I, I get clobbered by my neighbors, but okay. uh, I still think, I, I don't know why partial measures are ruled out while we go through this. There's a lot that could be done to the lakes that would dramatically improve the appearance of them, maybe cut down on some of the odor without you know doing any dredging at all. As you're saying, when the lakes fill up, but they're uh, you know the shoreline in certain places is kind of really, gotten kind of scuzzy it's a lot of stuff floating in the north end of north lake and well joe we do that okay. every year and this won't be any exception we'll do another lake clean up and and make it not so scuzzy <laughs> yeah well on the west side of of north lake is what professor bragg uh the super expert he kept saying to me if you clean some of that out, you'll get, you know, the air predominantly comes and blows northeast. So that's, that's kind of a block of air. So when we get the smell problem going later in the summer, when the water's lower and the, and the, uh, and the heat's going, then the algae, uh, he claims that the air moving over the lake would help a lot on the smell. All right. So that's, you know, that's temporary, something we could do volunteer pretty much. And real quick, Tiffany, you talked about the asphalt. I am certainly all in favor of getting that moved along. I know it's going to end up being more than I think it is, but hopefully not more than 10,000 to put a little strip that big there. But maybe I don't know asphalt because I haven't done it in years and years and years. 
but I, I don't think that is that is certainly something that I think needs to be done as soon as we can get it. So as you mentioned, you have to do your readings and wait your time and right. Yeah, like I said, hopefully we'll get a couple different um, estimates here in the next, you know, we'll have a couple for you guys because that's a project that I know um, David put his information out online. That was something that people were behind. I've gotten handwritten letters. I told you guys that from Girl Scouts. Um, I walk it almost every day and it is a tripping hazard. There, there's no question about that. So I know um, people have gone down on it. Yep, we're going to get that. That is something that we can at least mark off this year because I'm, I'm confident you guys are going to move forward on that and I'm going to get you everything that we can to do that. Well, it'll be something that looks nice in the end, won't yes. it? All right, so I, I don't have anything else. Move to adjourn. <laughs> Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, have a good one, everyone.